So we say, how do we greet now? I hope we all had wonderful holidays. I hope we all rested well and great. So we are in for the glory ride. Glory to God. Yep, okay, so we go. Mm. Hallelujah. Okay, Telegram, sorry. I almost let you guys out. Okay, so we are on, on all platforms. We are live on all platforms. I say a blessed morning, afternoon, evening. Let's day to you all. Good to be here. Good to have you. It's um, it's been a glorious, glorious time. Uh, December of 2023. I know it looked like we've been very quiet because of what um happened. We had to end, but just to say that. Even as we start, as we begin a new season, it's a season where we are not the people who greet Happy New Year the way other people greet Happy New Year because we know our years and our times and seasons, uh, we, we understand it from the path of eternity. So we do not... We we are we do not greet the way others greet because our greeting is from a place of shalom, a place of absolute rest, a place where decrees are made, a place where configurations come into light, a place from whence we, they come, we are getting more and more conscious of our seated realm in glory heights. We 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 are getting more aware of our ascension or our operations from the place of ascensions. And that is why it is so exciting to have people in the house today and to just share with us. I'm glad to have um, Annie Matthew yeah. from Global Sons, uh, the Messy Group. It's good to have you in the house. All, the way, from, all the way from Qatar. Amen. Right. All right. So it's, it's so beautiful. Esther Ajiro, good to have you. Batima, good to have you. Abby from Germany, good to have you. <laughs> wow. They are all in the house. Hallelujah. All right. So today we are looking at a very special um topic, the conventions. Um Somebody called me and said, ah, why do you like <laughs> BB grammar? <laughs> why don't just make it simple? I said, but it's the simplest thing you can think about. Uh, for <laughs> if you understand what it means, as it's just the simplest thing you can think about, it is it is um it is what I call it an identification of our operations as sons of god amen so and it is what jesus said so all i'm just i'm just echoing the words of the lord jesus uh 
And that is why this is very unique. It's very important. Now, to say, just to make it known, by God's grace, every fourth Sunday of the month, we'll be having this kind of program because we need to build this. We need to get people to get established in this. People have been asking questions after the School of Supernatural. They've been asking questions that what is, what is the way forward? What next? How do I live this life? How do I operate in the supernatural? How do I establish the things I learned in this 34, in the, the 34 days of in November? How do I now put them into practice? And that is the whole essence of this particular meeting, the conventus. So we are going to see practical ways on how we can actually establish this. I was in a meeting yesterday with um, uh, Manifold, and we had, our, it was supposed to be a nine hour meeting, but it stretched on to almost uh, 10 hours. No, more than 10 hours actually, almost um, 11 hours, all right? You know, because after the teaching, people broke into experiences and even I just discovered that people had questions in their minds and for some reason, the Lord just made me to give, to share a bit more and in share, in going into those sharings, answers just unlocked to the questions that people had in their hearts. And I'm trusting that this morning, that even as we go right in, that questions that have been popping up in the hearts of people will be answered in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Father. We worship you. We honor you, King of glory. We thank you because you are the one who called us. We are always with you. We've always been with you. Our consciousness of our being with you comes alive every time we draw closer to you. So this morning, we just submit ourselves completely and immerse ourselves in your knowledge in your wisdom and understanding, knowing that you already have prepared a meal for all for your people to come and eat. So we activate this realm, we unlock our understanding, we unlock our knowledge, and we open our hearts to be enlightened by you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. All right, so let's go to the right thing. Um, can somebody help me open to Matthew chapter 18? Let another person open to Matthew 16. You will read verse 18 and 19. Then let somebody open to Matthew 18. You help me read from verse 18 to 22. I want the um, Matthew 16 to come up first. Um, I will prefer the Amplified Version and the TPT, just those two. Amplified and TPT. If you are there, you help us read. Please, um, Rhoda, allow them to unmute. Matthew 16, what verses, please? 18 and 19. Okay. Let me read those. I give you the name, this is TPT. I give you the name Peter, a stone. And this rock will be the bedrock foundation on which I will build my church, my legislative assembly. And the power of death will not be able to overpower it. I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on us that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on us that which is released in heaven. Praise the Lord. Now, note that word. Okay, can somebody read the Amplified Version before I go, in, before I, test, I break that down? Amplified Version, please. Amplified Classic, actually. Can I read? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. And I tell you, you are Peter, Greek, Petros, a large piece of rock. And on this rock, in Greek it's Petra, a huge rock like Gibraltar, I will build my church and the gates of Hades, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind, 
declared to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatever you lose, declare lawful on earth, must be what is already loosed in heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's lay this foundation before we go into the chapter 18. Now, it says, remember, for those of us who have been following this series and in our journey into light, there was a, a teaching that we had where we're talking about um, that particular Matthew 16, when you read from verse 13, where we're saying that um, Jesus was in the region of Philippi, Caesarea, and he began to ask them, who do men say that I am? And it was the answer that Peter gave that gave that that gave rise to the to that particular passage that we those two scriptures that we just read. But um, let me just for those who may not have heard this before, I'm just going to lay a brief foundation in that Philippi Caesarea, um, Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus was. He was in the place where he was. He had seen four temples under a large mass of rock. And those temples, one of the temples was the temple of Zeus, the Greek god, another the temple of the Roman emperor, then the temple of Pan, another Greek god, then the fourth temple was a temple called the Gates of Hades. It was a temple. It was it was actually a geographical location on the earth realm, but it was an altar. Now, let's understand what temples are. Temples are living gateways. Either you can say living gateways or dead gateways, depending on what kind of temple it is. Like you, as the temple of the Holy Spirit, you are a living gateway. You are a living portal through which things that are flowing from the throne of Yahweh flow find expression on the earth realm. Take note of that. And if you want to write that, write it down. Because that is going to form the basis of what we are going to express or teach this morning. Now, so I said they are living gateways. They are, you are a living gateway. You are a portal. You are an avenue, a, uh, a passageway, a doorway through which everything that flows from the throne of fear with the expressions of God in the heavenlies, they find expression on the earth realm, beyond the earth realm. Let me use the word, the cosmic realms, because it's not just the earth realm. When you come into the full expression of your sonship, you begin to understand that it is not only the earth that you were ordained to govern. You were ordained to govern in the stars. You were ordained to govern, to, to rule over the sun, over the moon. And within the stars are galaxies. Now, you were ordained by your ordination as a son. You actually have the power, the authority to rule in other planets. Planets like Pluto, like Mars, you know, all the galaxies that form the, all the all the planets that make up the, the, the galaxy in a particular star where the Earth belongs to. Now, so when you understand that, it opens up something to you like I am... Okay, for those of us who have seen a video that I made with um, Sir Violet and a young man called Barrow, now, in that particular video, we're explaining something that if you limit your age, now, one way to understand that you are an ageless person, that you are not supposed to be bound in time, is to know this. When you begin to, when your consciousness of your sonship, your kingship, your rulership over other planets, over other galaxies. When that consciousness comes into maturity, you, that is when you start understanding the operations of your agelessness and your timelessness. Because if you look at certain planets where one year in that place is 240 years on the Earth realm, depending on the distance from the sun, because we use sun and moon to count timings, right? So um, how long it takes to go around the sun, so you say, okay, one, 24 hours have gone, one year have gone, and all of that. Now, the further a planet is from the sun, the, the, the more expansive, the same time that is on the Earth realm, the more expansive that time be becomes. It becomes... Um, it becomes, what I say, elasticated. So in a planet where one year in that planet equals 
240 years in on the earth realm, what it means if you are even 120 years that they will say on the earth realm that the person lived a long life, what it means that in that planet, if you were to be, if you were to visit that planet, you will find that you are not yet in existence. <laughs> you are not yet in existence. So why do you limit yourself by numbers and you call it age? And you see, all of these things are embedded in God. They are housed in God. God is their housing. God, they are contained in him. And if they are contained in him and you are one with the Father, then you can't say that you are limited by time or space. You will no longer say, you no longer be judging your age by the operations of the sun and the moon. You no longer be judging your time or your the, the times you spent in the cosmic realms based on that which was given you as for signs and for timings. Because you are supposed to be partnering with your father to decide how those all of those instruments, those elements, how they are, how they are to operate. That is why you see in Psalm 148 that it, it began to talk about the snow, the vapor, the, 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 the fire, stormy wind. It said they all attend to the words of the Lord. Now, I want you to understand this, that because you are one with the Father, what it means is that every time you speak, it is the word of the Lord that is speaking. That is why the elements of nature will obey everything that you say. The stars will listen to your instructions. The sun will listen to your instructions. The moon will listen to your instructions. The rain will listen to your instructions. The, 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 the snow, vapor, even the volcano eruption and everything will listen to your instruction pending on your ability to come, depending on how far, on how well you have mastered the knowledge of your sonship in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. So, so when we are talking about the conventus now, I was talking about, so in that particular place, um, when Jesus chose, he did not choose the temple of Zeus to describe what he had come to do. He did not choose the temple of the emperor. He did not choose the temple of um, the second Greek god, um, god, but he chose a particular temple called the gates of Hades. Why? Because all the, all the operations in the other temples were actually released from the gates of Hades. What it means that all those other temples, death could prevail over them, but there is Something that Jesus came to build. He said, I will build my church. You know, now, when you look at the word church, that is why TPT brought it out. He, he went, TPT went into the root word, into the etymology of the word ecclesia, and he brought out what it means, my legislative assembly, because the word ecclesia really differs from the word church. Mm. So the word ecclesia, so he said, I will build my own ecclesia. Like I have said before, why did it take Jesus 4,000 years to come and do what he came to do? Why did he have to wait 4,000 years to bring into time that which was done in eternity? I believe strongly because that it was because there was nothing that replicated what Jesus was coming to do until the Greek and Roman Empire came into, began to express that can began to, you know, give that kingdom expression. You know, before 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 the Greek and Roman Empire, you will see that the Babylonian kingdom and system of rulership was such that they will come into your city, they will overrun the city, then they will carry people from that city, they will carry a remnant and take into Babylon to teach them the language of the Chaldees. So they were ruling over every region, but their style of, the, the style of rulership was such that they will subdue, they will break down everything, destroy your city walls and everything. But the Roman Empire and the Greek Empire had a different approach. They did not destroy, but yet they took over nations. They did not, they did not change your culture. They did not have to teach you, but they just came to establish a culture in your place and superimpose their culture upon your own culture. 
So, and that was what Jesus saw. So he said, what I have come to build, I will build my, my own ecclesia because the Roman had their own ecclesia, the Greek had their own ecclesia, and it was through that ecclesia that they were colonizing nations. So, not to dwell on it, there's already a teaching on that, talking about the root word, you know, the, uh, the, the ecclesia and the apostolos. So, the ecclesia is a governmental system by which the kingdom of God was designed to be established on the earth realm. It is not the kind of thing that we see where we are building, erecting edifices, and we call that church. Yes, that is actually what church is, because every time you check the dictionary meaning of church, the root meaning of church, what you will see, what we pop up is a building. <laughs> what we pop up is a building. So to compensate for that, they now started telling us that we are the building. But the truth is when you, every time you can do it right now, you Google church, what we pop up is a building. But you see, what Jesus came to do was a system, what Jesus came to build was a system, a movement, and an assembly. Not just assembly, but a legislative assembly. That is why the root word for the etymology of Ecclesia is a people called out from amongst the people to stand, to sit at the city gate, sit in an assembly, they form an assembly to do what to legislate over cities. Now, so Jesus began to say, said this revelation that I'm the son of God, now that you know that I'm the son of God, said this is what Upon this revelation, I'm going to build my own ecclesia, my legislative assembly, and the power, the power that flows, what the gates of Hades is releasing will not be able to overpower or overrun it. In other words, in every place where death has been, where darkness has been entrenched, in every place where death has been operating, what I have come to build will overrun and neutralize those operations. Are you following me? Okay. Now, so, and I said, I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm so that whatsoever you allow on the earth, I'm going to combine both the TPT and the amplified version now, said, for so whatsoever you allow to manifest on the earth realm must be, must be what has been allowed, what has been released from the throne of Yahweh. Are you following me? Now, so how do you know what has been released from the throne of Yahweh? That is where your priesthood comes, comes in. When he says that um, he, he made us kings and priests unto our God and we reign on the earth. The reason for the king and priest is because your priestly ordination gives you access into the heaven's kingdom realm where you enter into the courts of our God, the courts of the sons, the court of the blood to do what? To do business with God and to understand what had been released from the throne. And when you understand what had been released from the throne, we Africans, we understand these operations very well because in the African tradition, all right, where there is a king, there is always a priest. They call them the eyes of the gods. They call them those who legislate or who administer the oracle. So before a king will make any pronouncement or will make any major decision or something is going wrong in the land, some strange things are happening in the land, you will see that the king will call to the priest and ask him to go and consult with the gods. It's after the consulting with the gods that it will now come. This is what the gods are saying. Are you seeing what I'm saying? That is why even in the Jewish tradition, before they go to war, you will see that they will first consult with the priests. So, they, so you see, like what happened in Ziklag, when the children, when David and his men, they came back from, from war and they saw that their families and everything they had had been carted away by the, the, the Amalekites. What And the people wanted to stone David. After they had wept, they wanted to stone David. What did David do? David did not say, please, let's consult the priest. 
He said, bring me the ephod. Now the ephod, the, on, the people, the only people who were allowed to use the ephod were priests. So David was the first person in the flesh, even before the advent of Jesus, that manifested and expressed both the prophetic, the the the, the priestly ordin his priestly ordination and the kingly unction. He was already anointed king. That's why you will see that all through the reign of David, David never consulted with any with any priest. He had direct access to God. He understood what God was saying, and that was why you found that he led the children of Israel in a very different way. That's why he was called a man, a man after a man after God's own heart. And that's why even his name means beloved. So now you and I had Jesus, when he came also, you see that he patterned his governmental system, he patterned his kingly, his reign, in line with the Davidic operation, style of operation, which was kingdom, which was city taking. <laughs> but you see, David does, did his own by war, but he did his own by establishing and implanting in men the very kingdom and the life and the and the, 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 the unction, the authority of his father's throne. So he came. He was also king, priest, and prophet. So when he was good. He said he now ordained us. He made us to be kings and priests. Why? Just the same way that the natural kings, they will consult with priests to know what the gods are saying before they're talking about the African, in the African context now. But you see what? You now, you have access, direct access. Because of the, the, the veil that had been torn, you can go beyond the veil right into God's presence you have the power as a son to go to approach the one who dwells in unapproachable light because you are one with him. So you also dwell in unapproachable light. So when light begins to commune with light, there is an explosion of light. There's a frequency that is activated that the world cannot understand. So Jesus said, I've made you kings and priests unto our God. So you have the privilege to assess the heavenly realm. So that which, the, the kind of operation that Adam before the fall operated, when he had access into the heavens and the earth, he had access. That's why you could see that God will come in the cool of the day to fellowship with him. It was, it was the garden of Eden that when you read it, you think it was just a, that garden is inside of you. For those of us who followed the morning dance and all of that, you will understand it this very well. Talking about the sanctified imagination, where, where you actually enter into yourself and you begin to see and fellowship in that garden. So that garden is actually real, but it dwells inside of you. So you have access to it. And that is the realm from which you operate. That is the realm where you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above powers and principalities, far above the stars, far above the sun, where you begin to rule. So you are the one who determine the timelines, the seasons, and the times of the cosmic realms. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you see, when we begin to understand things from this angle, then it begins to change the way religion configured our mindset to reason. So he said, I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm so that whatsoever you allow, you bind, must be what has been bound or what has been allowed, what has been... Um, sorry, whatsoever you you lose whatsoever you permit whatsoever you allow must be what has been loose must be what has been permitted or allowed from the throne of god so for you to do that your consciousness of your dwelling seated with him on his co-executive throne must be awakened and that is what we learned in the school of supernatural 
That's why you find that for you to walk in the supernatural, the consciousness of fear you are dwelling in the supernatural heights, in ascension realms, in glory heights, must be awakened. And you must continue to walk in that consciousness. You must not allow that consciousness for one moment to dwindle. It must be a constant flow, a constant walk. Then, when you have mastered that, so you see what has been allowed, you allow it because you are the gateway between, you are the gate between the heavens and the earth. You are the gatekeeper also between eternity and time. So you, you have the power to dislodge anything that will not allow those things to manifest. And that is what, you know, I posted something talking about the will. That is what the will actually was ordained to do. He is the one who gives us the power both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So what that means is that the Lord has given you the power to know what his will is. And what is the will of God? Anything that brings pleasure to the Father, that is his will. <laughs> You're, you were created to give him pleasure. Everything that you see created by God he created for his own pleasure, and for his pleasure they were all created. So anything in, in your life, anything, any action you are taking, how do you know it's not God's will? How do you know that you are letting something that should not be let out to go through you and to be expressed on the earth realm? If that thing does not give God pleasure. And guess what? He has given you the power to know. Both to know and to do his will that gives him pleasure. Because your scroll, everything about your scroll, remember, was to do his will and to bring him pleasure. So the same statement that Jesus made that I come in the volume of the book to do your will, O God. That is your story. That is your declaration because I also, I am here in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do his will. So the own, my ordination in life is nothing else but to do his will. But the moment I allow what should not be allowed based on my constant fellowshipping with Yahweh on the throne, my legislations, my, my legislations of my priesthood in the courts and from the courts, the moment I allow certain things to pass through me into the earth realm, that is when the remedy, the remedy is now is now activated, which is choice. So the choices we make are actually, you know, just like, um, you know, if when people don't make their exams first time, they will say they are taking them through into a remedial class. The word remedial is something to remedy failure. Do you see? So the remedial classes are a technology, an alternative, a system put in place to correct or to remedy failure. So you see your will, the will is so strong, the will must be strengthened in order to know. And how do you strengthen your will? When, you, when your consciousness of where you are seated with God in heavenly places, with Christ in heavenly places, where you are hid with Christ in God, when you begin to live from that place, because your rulership, your reigning, your dwelling, your living life is from above. So when the consciousness of where you are seated is awakened, established, the never you are never wavering. You are unwavering. When that knowledge, when that understanding, when that, when you come alive in that place, then you will always know what the will of God is per second, per time. 
and that is what you will always allow to express to find expression both on the earth realm and in all the galaxies. Okay. All right. I'm building, I'm just laying this foundation so that we'll we'll understand where what when I, when we get into the conventus, we'll understand what he's saying. So your priesthood gives you access, then by your kingly anointing, based on what you have seen, you now release that into the earth realm and establish the will of God on the earth realm. All right. So, so can somebody now help me read um, Matthew 18 from verse 18 to 22? Matthew 18 from 18 to 22, I'm reading the Amplifier Classic. It says, truly, I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. 19, again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, harmonize together, make a symphony together about whatever, anything and everything they may ask, it will come to pass and be done for them by my father in heaven. Stop, don't, don't go any further. That's actually what I wanted. Now, that verse 19 is our key scripture for today. Now, let's understand what Jesus was saying. Because the questions that people have been asking that what is the way forward after the school of supernatural? This is the answer to that question. Verse 19 of Matthew 18 is the answer to that question. Now you see that he repeated what he said in Matthew 16 in verse 18. That whatsoever you declare to be improper must be what has already been declared improper. Whatever you disallow, you declare to be improper. You say, no, this can't pass through me to find expressions. Must be what had been and uh, what had been declared. Improper. So that should not be allowed to be expressed on the earth realm. You are the one, you are the gateway through which it may be allowed or it may not be allowed. You have the final decision. Now, let me say this. I want to awaken your ability to take responsibility for things that you have blamed people for. All right? Everything you have seen gone wrong around you that you were blaming the government for. The government was helpless. Why? Because you, that is sitting, you are sitting on a throne that rules and governs that particular governmental seat. You did not. It is what you allowed that the government or the politicians acted upon. If you had shut it down from the time you saw that this is improper, to be, to be manifested on the earth realm or in the cosmic realms, and you shut it down in that place, you did not allow it to go through your will. We, won't ha we wouldn't have been in the place where we are now locked in trying to make, to choose, oh, what should we now do? The remedy, all these remedial things that we are now trying to put in place wouldn't have been needed if your will have played the role it was designed and ordained to play. Now, so what should be the way forward after the School of Supernatural? The Conventus is the way forward. So what is the Conventus? Another word for the Conventus is the word jurisdiction. jurisdiction. That, is where the, that is where the word jurisdiction was gotten from. Now listen to this. <laughs> the Roman Conventus was, is said to is described this way that where two or three Romans assemble, where two or three Romans assemble, he said they have in their midst the power and the authority of the emperor and Rome. In other words, where two or three Romans 
are gathered together where they are just talking. They are just gisting. They are not even doing anything responsible. They are just gisting. He said, right in that place, the nation of Rome had formed in that place. What it means is that anyone who comes into that place had entered into Rome. <laughs> ah, oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I get excited when I meditate on this. Every time I meditate on this. The moment two or three Romans are assembled together in a place, anyone who comes in there that is not a Roman automatically had entered into Rome because right there the nation of Rome had been formed. And when you get into the place and you do not behave like those Romans, you are seen as trespassing. So that place becomes a jurisdiction of the Roman Empire just because two or three Romans were gathered in that place. So that was why you see that the disciples, they did not ask Jesus, what do you mean by that? Because they were seeing it. He was using what was on ground to teach them what he was building. So he said, when he saw two or three Romans gathering a place and he knew what it meant, he knew that there was no Jewish person that could go there to just do every, anything, say, this is, the, this, this is my land. No. <laughs> Guess what? Do you know that during the past immediate past ad, uh, administration, when they were talking about the uh, Ruga and all of that, that was actually what they wanted to start doing. Because in any place where they had, if they had allowed it, they would have formed a Fulani community. And guess what? It would have been a Fulani community. Anyone who comes there will be speaking Fulani. Are you getting something now? Are you seeing the, are you already having the picture, the insight of what you should be doing after the supernatural, the school of supernatural? So Jesus said to them, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. That I am there in the midst of them, when you look at it just like that, you look at it literally, you will just be thinking that Jesus was saying, I will be in their midst. That is it. But beyond that, he was saying that where two or three of you are gathered together in my name, or you are assembled in my name, he said what he was saying, just the same way, the authority of the emperor of Rome is established in the midst of those Romans. Just the same way the kingdom of Rome is established, the, em the Roman Empire is established in that place. In the same way, we are two or three of us believers Called by the name of God, sons are together, assembled, uh, just as we are doing right now. The kingdom of God is established on this platform. What that means, by extension, from wherever you are gathered, we are, you are tuning in right now on this platform, across all platforms, I want you to know that in that place, the kingdom of God is established already. And you know something else? Where the kingdom of God is, you cannot say there is a kingdom without the full operation of the authority, the power, and everything that operates in that kingdom, they are fully expressed in that place. Now, listen to this. Based on that knowledge, that is why anything that should not be, anything that does not tally, Anything that does not represent the kingdom of God should not be in our midst right now. Ah, woo! Do you understand what I'm saying? What it means is that there is the authority right here, right now, to neutralize sicknesses, to neutralize pains, to neutralize 
court cases that were ordained from the atrium because there is no son of God. There is no son of the kingdom. Listen, there is no judge on the atrium that, that has the jurisdiction to sit over the case of a son. <laughs> is somebody hearing me? Woo! There is no earthly judge that has the jurisdiction, that has the authority to pass judgment over a son. Can you imagine, just picture in the same way that no Roman citizen could be judged by any nation where they have gone to colonize. Even when they commit a crime that is very obvious, that is even open. So long as the Romans are in that city as they colonize the colonial masters, no, 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 there was no there was no court in that land that had the jurisdiction. Instead, they will send, they will refer that matter to Rome. <laughs> that was why, even as a matter of fact, if you are even a Roman citizen, do you know that you cannot even be judged by any sitting court outside of Rome? In other words, the only place that had the jurisdiction to listen to your case was in Rome. That was what we saw with the life of Paul when he was being dragged. And at the point that they wanted to sentence him, he now said, I am a Roman. I'm a citizen of Rome. You see that fear grips the person that wanted to pass the judgment. Fear grips him because you are not supposed to do what? To judge, to sit in judgment against any Roman citizen. Oh my goodness. Uh, is your eye open to something? <laughs> Are you, do you now see that what our ignorance have robbed us because we did not know the authority we had, we did not know the place, we, 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 we were not awakened, our consciousness of where we are seated with and in God was not awakened. So, the enemy rode on our ignorance to rob us of quite a number of things. But alas, recoveries are coming because suns are rising. <laughs> Woo, my God, are you excited this morning? <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, my God, my God, my God. I'm just, I'm so excited right now. Come on, come on, people. Just let, 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 come on, just give God a high praise, a high, a high praise, a high praise. Now, come on, just lift your hand wherever you are. Say, Lord, I give you some high praise up there. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Woo, my God, my God, my God. Ah, so you see, what the enemy did through the power of religion was to keep us in a state of darkness. And they were plowing us. They were plowing our land. They were taking things from us. And when you make noise, they will drag you to court. Hi. By God's grace, in the last week of um, January, we are going to have, I, I, I thought it was going to be two weeks, but the Lord said no, three days, because it's going to be an introductory class to <laughs> wow, thank you, Father. For those who are into online tradings, any kind of online tradings, just get yourselves ready. Because we are going to run a special a three-day class that will unlock a kingdom system of trading virtually. Amen. So when Vivian sent me some things a few days ago, I just started laughing. Because the Lord had instructed me that it's time 
to awaken the minds of the sons to understand the operations of their wealth gates and to begin to connect with the kingdom currency that overruns and rules over the the currencies of the cosmic realms. You know, there is a currency that never loses value. Every other currency at one time or the other will lose, will drop in value, but this particular currency keep appreciating in value. That is the currency that the Lord, because once you connect with that currency, it will begin to open and unlock doors and overrun, neutralizing every contrary thing that have reigned and taking hold in the hearts of men. Because whatever trade you have, whether you call it crypto, all the crypto currencies, the online trading, the virtual trading that you see, they are a step down operation of the realm at which believers should be operating. Amen. All right. That's just that just a, a, a byway announcement so that you will be in the know and you start talking about it. We'll let you know once once we confirm the dates, we'll let you know. Amen. So be on the watch. Now, let's continue. So Jesus, he said, you see what these Romans are doing? Anyone in my kingdom, anyone called by my name, anyone, any where two or three sons are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. They have, they, they have a kingdom juris. They have formed a kingdom jurisdiction. They have formed a kingdom jurisdiction, a kingdom conventus, where the kingdom of God is established in their midst, which means. Anything they say. Oh, Esther, can you take that verse 19 again? Yes, sir. I'm going to be interrupting you as you are reading. So it you know how we do it. Eat it yes. like you are eating a gege bread. <laughs> again, I tell you, it is two, if two of you on earth agree. Harmonize together, make a symphony together about whatever, anything and everything. Talk, they... hold, it, hold it right there. He said, if two of you shall agree, you harmonize. In other words, there is a configuration that takes place. Then you come into agreement as touching something on the earth. Is it such a thing? Now read on. They may ask, it will come to pass. Whatever and you ask in that agreement, in that place where something has been formed, it said, now go on. And be done for them mm -hmm. by my Father in heaven. Now read the next verse, verse 20. For what ever two for wherever two or three are gathered drawn together as my followers in into hmm. my name okay hold on this is why i love the amplified because the other ones won't bring it out this way so where two or three are gathered together now in brackets read drawn it. together drawn together as my followers. As my followers. In. In. In brackets, into. Into. My name. Did you see that? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, they run into it and they are saved. Now, where two or three are gathered together, they are drawn in. They are, they enter mm -hmm. into the name of the Lord. Kai. Mm -hmm. What it means mm -hmm. is that they are swallowed up in God. Mm -hmm. They become one. 
there is an infusion of life. There is an mm. infusion mm. of oneness that takes place. Mm. Continue, my sister. Yes. Dear, I am in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Now, when you are infused into him, now in ascension, we say, I in you, you in me, we are one. Do you see that? Now we are saying where two or three. So it started from that verse 19. Say, if two of you shall agree as touching a thing, for that mm -hmm. agreement to take place, there must be a gathering and assembling together. When you mm -hmm. assemble together and you that gathering is in the name of the Lord, you are gathered into, into, mm -hmm. into you enter into that name that is a strong tower. Ooh. That name mm -hmm. that is a strong tower, that name that when you get into it, you are safe. When you enter into mm -hmm. that place. Every authority in heaven and on earth, every authority that rules in all the galaxies, you Amen. have it right there in your midst. Amen. And that is why when that takes place in the midst, when the converted comes into operation, uh, yeah, where two of you come into this consciousness and you are working in an office or you live in an estate and you are working in this consciousness, the moment you come together and you agree, guess what? We don't need to hold hands, the religious practice where we hold hands. No, no, no. You can be in the US and I am in Nigeria. You can be in Qatar and I am in Nigeria and we agree. Why? Because we entered into the name Oh, my God. <laughs> we entered into the name of Yeshua, locked in the, in the executive throne of Yahweh. When we enter into that realm, anything we present before God. Now, I'm going to use something. <laughs> Woo, my goodness. I'm going to use something to describe what we are talking about. You know, when we talk about kononia, the root word kononia means intercourse. The expre one of the expressions of kononia means intercourse. When you are locked in an intercourse, that is why we, when we talk about when we talk about sexual intercourse, you see that for those of us who have been in, our, in any of our um, marriage master class, when we talk about sexual intercourse, that is why you see that. It is in the coverage, in the ordination of marriage, that this operates in its fullness. Where you have tried and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed concerning something, nothing is happening. That's why I said one shall put a thousand to flight, but two shall put ten thousand to flight. Now, how does it operate? In the place of sexual intercourse, do you know that that thing was actually talking is an expression of deep, intense fellowship? Because that is the place where a man and wife bonds together as one. I once told a couple, they would be having issues. So I told the man, I said, prepare your wife. Prepare her properly. I said, you've not been preparing. You've not been. Every time you just go and you just. I said, what you were just doing, you were just having sex. I said, no. It's supposed to be an intent. It is the height of divine fellowship. It's a portal to entering into a realm. I, I'm using this to teach us something now. So let this consciousness be awakened in you. So he said, please teach me. So I took him through the process. Say, so prepare your wife. Let her desire you as you desire her. Do you know that when, people, when couples are prepared like that, it neutralizes any form of quarrels? Because you can talk freely without any form of anon, uh, anon, you know, anonymity. Every disagreement is neutralized. 
By the time you are getting into your bedroom, you are already desirous of each other. And I told him, when you have built that relationship and you have built that momentum, that by the time you hit the crescendo, by the time you enter into ecstasy and both of you are in, are in that ecstatic realm, make your request known to God. Three days later, he called me. He said, as a client, don't you think you should open a school for marriage? Say, because everything you told us, we followed them and sir, what we've been trusting God for the past three years, we got it in one day. Do you know why? Because they were bonded in absolute agreements. And that, and you see that moment, the moment they did that, and because their bonding was in Christ, so whatsoever they whatsoever request they made, it had the backing of the throne. So the resistances that had been, they were overrun, they were neutralized. Why? Because where God appears, heals, they will melt like wax. So I'm, I'm just using that to show you when he says that where two or three, when they come together, say they come into my name. It is a place of communion, a divine intercourse that takes place. There is a bonding. Now, let me show you something. Let me show you a negative thing. Or let me use this negative thing to teach us something. People who engage in porn. Where somebody will be in the US and they will send pictures. And they will say they are messing up. What was it? Thoughts and they were engaged in their thoughts. So that presence, that spirit was actually manifested. And you will see that this person, that person is over there, the man is in it in a different place entirely. And yet that presence, the presence of the lady, that spirit will be built around them. Now listen to this. That is a son expressing the fallen states. You that have been restored. If just as Esther is in the US right now, we admit together in the place of fellowship through our thoughts. Imagine the kind of kingdom presence we will generate. Am I making sense? I need answers and I need responses. Does, yes, does sir. Make, yes, know? sir. Yes, sure. So when he is saying, where two or three are assembled or gathered together in my name, said, the authority of my father's kingdom, everything that I represent, everything that I am, is right there in their midst. It is not because I am here with my wife and my daughter, but everyone, wherever we are right now, from anywhere in the world, we are actually connected, we are knitted. Whether you are on Zoom, whether you are on Telegram, whether you are on Facebook, whether you are on YouTube, whether you are on Mission R, it makes no difference. Whether you are seeing my face or you are not seeing my face, for the fact that we are fellowshipping on this platform right now, and we are our heart, so long as your heart is connected and is knitted to what we are doing here, Jesus, the authority of God's kingdom is here. That is why I'm going to give you just a minute right now, all right? And we are going to, you are just going to present anything and I am agreeing with whatever you are presenting before God right now. Just one thing, just one. You are going to present just one thing that you want to see manifest by Wednesday. I'm giving timeline because I want us to agree on it. You are going to present just one thing. I'm going to give you just a minute to do that. You are going to present just one thing, then I will agree with you. 
And I want you to release yourself in your heart so that we'll create a, quant a quantum field of love frequency that, resists, that releases a light frequency that begins to encircle everyone in every place, bringing us into one place by the Spirit. So what we are doing right now is to enter into an ascended realm. So our consciousness of where we are seated with Christ is being awakened right now. And as it is being awakened, so we all flow into that realm. So we come into oneness, entering into the incomprehensible light of Yahweh. And in this place, you will now make that request. And I want you to know that my heart is now knit with your heart in agreement. And as you make that presentation, by Wednesday, there will be testimonies. Are you ready? Are you ready? I need responses. Yes, Are you ready? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, now, sir. I just want you the yes, next sir. 60 seconds. Just make that request. Listen to what I'm going to say. Make that request. Say, Father, I make I present this now. And I decree and declare that this shall manifest. By Wednesday, I will see the results. I, I, my, I, I, I'm riding in the consciousness of where I am seated with Christ in heavenly places, where I rule and reign over time, where I walk as a master of time, where I create timelines. So in this place now, I release this request before you and I call it forth and I establish it on the earth trend. And I say by Wednesday, there will be a testimonial concerning this that I have presented in the name of Yeshua. So just go ahead and make that request. Um, just know this, I am agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with Rhoda. I agree with Abby. I agree with Agatha. I agree with Annie. I agree with, I'm agreeing with Annette Augustina. I'm agreeing with Baru. I'm agreeing with Blanche. I'm agreeing with Busola. I'm agreeing with Chibi. I'm agreeing with Ade Atoke. I'm agreeing with Joy Haruna. I'm ag I don't have to just know that I'm agreeing with everybody. I'm agreeing with Esther, Esther Chiwa. I'm agreeing with Pamela Williams. I'm agreeing with Chinelu. I'm agreeing with Sede. I'm agreeing with Sunday Adam. I'm agreeing with Winifred. I'm agreeing with everybody or across platforms, everyone on YouTube, everyone on Facebook, even those who will listen here and after. I'm agreeing with you right now. Esther Ajiro, Batima, Iris King, I'm agreeing with you, Jennifer. I'm agreeing with you, Josephine. I'm agreeing with you, Kate. I'm agreeing with you, Lovelyn. I'm agreeing with you, and Chidera's mom. Funke, I'm agreeing with you, Miracle. I'm agreeing with you, Obina. I'm agreeing with you, Shalom. I'm agreeing with you. Glory to God. I agree with you right now. Violet, I'm agreeing with you. Um, let me talk by I wrong. I'm agreeing with you, Uche. I'm agreeing with you, Velma. I agree with you, Victor. I'm agreeing with you, Vivian. I'm agreeing with you, Zina. I'm agreeing with you all right now. I'm agreeing with you. Lady Orok, I'm agreeing with you, Udu. I'm agreeing with you, Ima. I'm agreeing with you, Joyce. I'm agreeing with you, Esther. I'm agreeing with you, Gifts. I'm agreeing with you, Anita. I'm agreeing with you, Temi Tokwe Adegoke. I'm agreeing with you, Tony. I'm agreeing with you, Goodness. I'm agreeing with you, Janet. I'm agreeing with you, Douglas. I'm agreeing with you, Equem. I'm agreeing with you, Adeni. I'm agreeing with you, Gweze. I'm agreeing with you, Edward. I'm agreeing with you, Jackie. I'm agreeing with you, everyone on Mixed Arrow, everyone on YouTube. I agree with you one by one. I agree with you right now, standing on that word that says, if two of you shall agree as touching a thing, it shall be granted by our Father who is in heaven. So we declare it granted now. And starting from tonight, the testimonies begin to come. And by Wednesday, there will be an explosion of his almightiness concerning that thing. It is released now. In the name of Jesus, it is done. It is, there is an overturning 
there is an establishing, there is a release, there is a manifestation. <laughs> Amen. You know, where I went to minister yesterday, I shared with them certain things, talking about using this um, conventus to say everywhere you are, you are supposed to be expressing your sonship by decrees, you know, by declarations and all of that. So by the time I got home, somebody had got, gotten home. As soon as she was entering her street, she made declaration over her street, declared over her house, and all of a sudden, some she got a phone call. Her neighbor, who goes to one of these um, white garment churches, right? <laughs> all these ritualistic churches, called her and said, I don't want to go to this church again. Tomorrow, I'm following you to where you worship. Amen. So she sent the message to their platform. So the pastor forwarded it to me to say, and she was saying, whoa, it works, it works, it works. I said, of course it works. It's what we have practiced for the past 30 years. And in fact, more than 30 years, but talking about even in the field is what we have practiced and we have lived by it in the past 30 years and it had not failed. Instead, it's increasing. It's yielding greater fruits. So yes, it works. So somebody's testimony just started right about now. Amen. You will take territories. You will take regions. Amen. Through the power, the knowledge, the operation of the conventus, Amen. you will overrun cities. You will overrun Amen. organizations. You Amen. will overrun kings. You will overrun nobles. You will overrun places. In the Amen. name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So you see, Jesus was telling them, he said, listen, where two of you are gathered together in my name. So this is the consciousness. So what should you be doing after this close supernatural? In the consciousness of the might that you have generated, the knowledge that you have generated and you are walking in, anywhere you enter, Connect with, listen, if there is no believer around you, connect with other believers. And guess yes, what? Sir. I, wanted to, I want to open your eyes to something. <laughs> connect with the cloud of witnesses. If you can't think of anybody to connect with, Ooh. connect with the cloud of witnesses. Because we had two or three are gathered together in my name. Connect with the crowd of witnesses that are partnering with you. And establish the kingdom, the authority. Establish a conventus in that place that begins to manifest and express the authority and power of God's kingdom. Oh, my God. The reason we thought that we were alone was because we Amen. didn't see Pastor Clem, we didn't see Sister Sede, we didn't see this person or that person. But you have Elijah with you. <laughs> and you have the greatest cloud of witness with you. His name is Yeshua. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> yes, Even yes, if you don't yes. remember any other. Yes. That's why I said I will, I lo, I am with you till the end oh. of the age. Yes. And guess what? Even after the age, <laughs> he's still with us. But throughout eternity, we never leave each other. So you begin to see Kabbalaga, Legegege, Mora, Tafi, and that. Woo, my goodness. You begin to see that we are the only limits that we have to ourselves. Wow. The only thing that will limit me is my ignorance. My God. Very true. But the moment I begin to walk in the awakened light, 
in the consciousness of what he has made me, not what he is making me, what he has made me, because I am complete. You know, there's an old song, complete, complete, complete in him. Do you believe that song? So it's not by work of righteousness, but by his grace alone, I am complete in him. Do you believe in that song? Yes, I do that song. Do you believe the wordings of that song that you are complete? So why do you behave as one that they are making? Instead of behaving as one who has already been made. Woo, come on. I want you to declare it, I am complete. I am complete. I am complete in him. I am complete. Ooh. I am complete in him. Ooh. 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 I receive and stay in that consciousness. Mm. Say it like you know it, that in me dwells the fullness of the Godhead. Come on. In me dwells me the fullness of the Godhead. Of the Godhead. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am complete. I am complete. I am completing him. You see, the the we <laughs> you know they told us that Jesus, religion taught us this, that Jesus is the only one that had the fullness of the Holy Spirit in him. Hmm. That was what religion taught us. In Sunday school, in those days, they taught us that Jesus hmm. is the only person that has the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that we all have him in measures. I say, really? Mm. But as I began to journey into light, I realized that Jesus was only showing me everything that I am. He only came to unlock and awaken my consciousness of who I am, who I was, who I am, and who I is. Do you understand what I'm saying? American English, say who I is. Yes. So, like Jesus, when he says, the same yesterday, today, and forever, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. The one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come, that is who I am. Because I was before the foundations of the earth was formed. And I am I was with him when all of creation were being created because I dwelt in his I dwelt in his thoughts. I want I want to I want to for those who are yet to understand this I want to burn something off your chest. You were in him when all of creations were being formed. Why? How do I know that? Because in the beginning in the principality, in the arche, was the word, and the word was with him. So, you were with him because you were in his thoughts. And in due time, that which had been concluded, everything you are, is everything you are, everything you are, ex you are expressing. Listen, I'm not talking about the things that you, your will did not stop. But everything you are manifesting are things that have been concluded in eternity. Even before you were formed in your mother's womb. That is why it said concerning Jeremiah that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I ordained you. Your ordination did not come because a pastor laid hands on you. Your ordination happened in eternity. Then in due time, like it was in the days of Jesus, so that the lamb that was slain in eternity, at some point in time, he was asked, he was permitted to be brought into time to establish in time that which was already concluded in eternity. Are you following me? So your ordination did not happen. <laughs> Your ordination did not happen the day they poured a bottle of oil on you 
and say, I now ordain you to be a pastor. Your ordination happened in eternity. To be money. So when the day you were given back to that which had been concluded in eternity was released to find expression in time, so that you finding expression in time will now carry, woo, will now carry the things that are in time that have been subdued, subjugated by reason of the fall, will now carry that operation into eternity so that eternity will now evade time. So the operations, your expression as a son is to bring it to bring eternity to invade the cosmic realms so that the cosmic realms will begin to express eternity. So, what are you supposed to be doing after the school of supernatural? In every place you find yourself, when you gather around people. If, there is, if you feel there are no believers there, then connect with the cloud of witnesses and establish the kingdom of God in that place by way of your declarations. And there are times you don't need to speak a word. Yet, your whole body is declaring things in the atmosphere. But why? Because you are now walking in the full expression of a song. Yeah. Bringing into time, establishing in the cosmic crimes that which have been concluded in eternity. When, when you walk in this consciousness, please show me that thing that will cause you to be afraid. Show me that thing that will cause you to fret. Where is that thing that will rouse anxiety in your vein? I want you to see they are absent. <laughs> they, they have are, been neutralized. They are absent. They have been neutralized. Because they no longer exist. And even if they were to manifest, they are, they are a few years late. Amen. Because now, you see, you're coming into this awareness. What it does is that it takes you to invade your yesterday. It takes you to invade your tomorrow and brings all of them into the now and you take them, eternity past, eternity present, eternity, and eternity future, you bring them into one place as a sandwich, and you begin to chew it. It is in your coming and walking in this consciousness, and your exp the expression of the conventus is such that it will so express itself that you are able to enter into somebody's, to journey into somebody's past, correct some things and say, don't worry, it is done. That which happened, you will, it will no longer have any effect on you. And the person leaves your presence and they, they see that everything you said is true and they come back to say, I want to know what you know. Then you become a highway, you become a doorway, you become a doorpost, you become a signpost through which they begin to find their own expression as songs. Hallelujah. So I pray this day, and I I pray by declarations that you will begin to stand as a conventus, a kingdom conventus in every place that you are, expressing the very life, the kingdom of God, establishing the kingdom of God in every place that you are. Listen to this. I want you to understand this. Your home is a, is a kingdom conventus. What it means, any operation of darkness that comes into your home, they are operating outside their jurisdiction. 
What it means is that sicknesses, when they come to attack your family, any member of your family, you can stand and say, hey, this is a kingdom conventus. You are trespassing. And as soon, while the words are yet coming out of your mouth, you will see that the angels will swing to action and carry that thing to deal with it and to break it. What it means is that failure has no hold, has no place in your home anymore. What it means is that any form of, listen to this, that is what Isaiah was saying, Isaiah 54, where it says that in righteousness thou shalt be established. That is establishing the kingdom conventus. When you read from that verse 14 of Isaiah 54, it was actually releasing by way of prophecy the expression of the kingdom conventus. Hey, gaga, ga, ga. said, in righteousness you shall be established, oppression will be far from you, no evil will come near your hey, no evil will come near your dwelling place. Why? Because your dwelling place has become the dwelling place of Yahweh. You now went ahead to say, I am the one who created the smiths, the goldsmith, who brings forth his instrument for his work. I also created the, the waster to waste or the destroyer to destroy. Before they said, they will surely gather, but their gathering is not of me. Therefore, every gathering against you, for your sake, they will fall, they will scatter. In another place, they will gather in one way, but they shall flee in seven ways. And I began to speak in that Isaiah. Say, because I'm the one who brings forth the instrument, the who created the ghost me that brings forth the, the instrument for his work. I created the, 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 the waster or the destroyer to waste or to destroy. Therefore, you see, a anytime you see the word therefore, don't start from there. Back up a little because there was a conversation that was going on. In verse 13, he said, your children shall be taught of the Lord. Before he now said, in righteousness you shall be established. Do you see? So he was talking about a family, a family that had become a kingdom conventus. Where the kingdom of God is established and where the kingdom is established, there is no dark operations. There is... You can, the enemy does not have a hold in that place. Hey, is somebody hearing me? Oh, my goodness. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, woo, woo. So when your children are taught of the Lord, they enter, they are brought into the conventus oppression. They come, they are brought into the kingdom jurisdiction where no earthly oppression no oppression of darkness has the jurisdiction to tamper, to judge, to oppress, to disorganize, or to take anything, to steal anything from them. So you see, when, even when they are saying the thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy, that thief does not have, a juris, does not have the jurisdiction to steal anything, to destroy anything, or to kill anything that belongs to you, or that is established, or that is in within the region where two or three, where the kingdom conventus have been formed. Hallelujah. So, then it began to say, therefore, no weapon formed against you because you have formed a kingdom conventus there is no weapon. That is why when they tell me that they bombed, there is a bomb blast in a place where believers were worshipping, I put a question mark. Because if that assembly was unto God, if they were assembled in the name of Yeshua, listen, there is no weapon that will be formed against them that will prosper. Let them throw a stratospheric missile, it will be neutralized. And if that missile was designed to go off, they will divert the missile into the ocean where it will not harm even the fishes.
they will take it into a teach. As a matter of fact, maybe, <laughs> maybe there is a gold mine around you, but you never knew. The Lord can actually permit the enemy to release it, to send a missile or to send a bomb blast, and they will direct it to that place where there is a gold mine so that they will help you to discover the gold that you never knew was there. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, that's why I said that there is no earthly judge that has the jurisdiction to judge a son. Every accusation against a son, it says you, a son, by reason of the conventions that you have formed, will do what? You will judge. You will silence them by reason of the authority of your father's throne. Look at what he says next. He said, this is the heritage. This is the heritage of the children of the Lord, the sons of God. Say, their, their righteousness is of me, which means they are clothed in the righteousness. We are clothed in the righteousness of God. So his nature has become our nature. Glory to God. So, brethren, you see that fear is gone. It has lost its grip. It's neutralized. Sicknesses are gone. Oppressions are neutralized. Everything that the enemy released against us, it come to an end. Why? Because we have come into the full expression. This, in this time and season, we have now entered into the full expression of the kingdom conventus. And this is the season. This is the place that I welcome you. And this is what we have come to activate. God bless you. So I'm just going to stop here. And I will allow for questions. And discussions. Hallelujah. So we are going to allow for questions. And we're going to allow for discussions. Amen. So the floor is open now. You have questions on and you know questions based on anything. Just ask. Okay, but yeah. Yes, Hi everyone. Um, I want to know what does it mean to gather in the name of Jesus? It's not just gathering, gather together. It means gather assembly. together. Yeah. Because you can gather and you won't function. But every time you gather together, you function. Because when you assemble to function. So to you see, every time you come together in the name of the Lord is actually to carry out a kingdom responsibility. Okay. So um our coming together in the name of the Lord is to know what has been released to come into the full expression of our assignments. I'll give you an example. Just like what is happening in Sierra Leone right now, very ugly, this Kush thing, where they keep adding layers and layers. You see, you can see the oppression of death. So it's like the gates of hate is just opened up turning people into zombies, living dead. So now, how do you stop that? It will take the ecclesia of Jesus Christ coming together to establish a kingdom conventus. What is a kingdom conventus? Is, your, is it just so that you will just just eat, drink? No. Every time you come together is to carry out a function of God's kingdom. Is to carry out is to express the definitions that are being released from the throne of God. To establish on the earth and to allow the expressions from the throne of God 
we become the, the gateways through which the frequencies of life, the frequency of light flowing from the throne of God hits the earth and there is an explosion of his almightiness. So that what the government, of course, they can't do anything if the conventus of Jesus Christ does not begin to function the way. Like I said, every time the word conventus is also jurisdiction, which means that place becomes when every time two believers, three believers come together in a place, what you have automatically done is that you have created a jurisdiction for kingdom expressions and kingdom the, the operations of the kingdom of God. What it means is that the authority of God begins to find expression in that place. The love of God begins to find expression in that place. The miraculous begins to re get released. Deliverances begin to happen in that place. Healings begin to take place in that place. Why? The jurisdiction that allows for the expression of life flowing from Yahweh's throne has been established. That is what the conventus is. The conventus really is the name given. Jesus was describing the conventus when he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name. So every time there is a Roman conventus, it's actually to function, to make a decision and to establish room. The culture to establish a jurisdiction where the 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 Roman the 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 the, the what, what I, the Roman authority the Roman culture begins to find expression in that place. Amen. So every time there is a coming together, it is to the the first and what is the what is the major function? What is your major function? Your major function, remember, is to give him pleasure. So it's to establish in a place everything, anything and everything that we give the Father pleasure. Because that is our ordination. So you are establishing the will of God in that place. What is the will of God? That which gives him pleasure. So, Batima, does that answer your question? Does that help you? Yes, Apostle. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank so you. now, yeah. um, I think somebody just asked a question on chat please i may not be able so somebody can help me read the chat if there's a question in the ad on the chat please just help me read it all right lunch i saw you i see your hand up go ahead please yes sir good morning sir good morning sir and welcome to a new season yeah. thank you so much sir for this teaching i'm really really blessed i'm sorry i'm, I'm just out if, if just in case it's noisy but i'm in the car um since the first i've been engaging your teachings since january 2022 talking about the world gates, I have been inside. I basically made almost, I don't know how many pages of notes, but I finished the whole book writing. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, Pastor Clem is in another level of, the way you pray, the way you declare, it was just out of this world. So I was, I've been engaging in it and trying to understand a lot of things. So you were talking about joining into light, then you talked about priesthood, you talked about envisioning, you talked about the glassy sea. I have been, I know you will remember those teachings. I've entered into those teachings. Now, so my question, because you said, you are thinking teaching about converters, but you said ask any question. I'm like, I'm asking this question. <laughs> okay, so, so you talked about the world gates, you talked about the many gates, but you said the highest gates we are in is the gates um, that Christ took, or we are seated far above. But you talked about, you said, you mentioned something, you said the Chinese understand the sea gates and the world gates, and they are taking over nations through that. So um, I just have a strong strong feeling that this year is such a great year for us to get a lot of wealth. So my question, sir, where you were talking about priesthood, um, I would just want to read quickly Ecclesiastes. It says, cast your bread, uh, Ecclesiastes 11, verse 1, it says, cast your bread on the surface of the waters. You'll find it after many days. So now it's talking about water. And there was somewhere I read as well in Psalm, um, Psalm 29, 1. It says, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. So I, I started engaging and going deeper into that scripture. I have my own interpretation of what the Lord has been revealing to me, but I don't really know much about it. And also the, the last scripture I want to read. I was reading about um, 
in, in John 4, where Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. And um, in, verse, in verse 37, 38, it says, For in this case, the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. So this scripture has told me I don't need to sow before I reap. Now, I want to enter into their labor. Into people have prepared wealth, all the wealth they are stacking up that they are getting. I want to enter into it. And I I, I want to use my environment. I want to enter into the world in the territories that have been allotted to me through your teachings that you told us that there are allotments already given to us. I want to enter into the wealth in my nation across the sea. I want to take it all. So now I'm asking, sir, could you shed more light on the sea gates and the world gates, how to take such things, standing in our priesthood? There was one place you talked about the glassy sea. You said that glassy sea is the very place where God created everything that was. We stand over it and we take over. But I just want to say in our, it looks, it, it's not that it looks vague to me, but I just want to know how we can command these worlds that are not ours. We can enter into it presently. It's not by praying, I receive, I receive. No, I want to know the techniques you have used based on the teachings. I don't know if I've said many, many things, but um, I hope you, uh, you understand my question, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, because of the uniqueness of your question, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stop the recording and start again. So that's because it's going to. So I'm going to. Yeah, I, I, I'm intentionally breaking that so that. But well, this is a whole teaching by itself. This is a whole teaching by itself. Um, the sea gates. It's a, it's a teaching. The wealth gate is another teaching, you know. Um, but there's something I, I, I'll, I'll just try to simplify it, okay? Talking about entering the, the wealth of the labors of people that have gone before us, okay? Now, listen to this. What Jesus was saying in that particular place was this. You know, um, just like when you read the Hebrews 11, and he was saying that these people, there was something they began. He said, but you see, they did not enter into perfection because they will not be perfected except by us. Which means that which they began, we are the perfection of what they began. That is why it is wrong to say that we are waiting for a revival that is coming. Because we are the revival that the people that had been before us, we are the revival that they have been hoping for. That's why I said, Abraham, they saw our days and they rejoiced. Why did they rejoice? Because they saw something that they had heaped up Something they have started, they have, they were heaping up for us. They labored. They labored. Now we are supposed to be, our labor is from the place of rest. I want to bring out two things first. So the laborer is worthy of his wage. Now what we have interpreted that to be is that the, the laborer is worthy of his salary. Because where Jesus gave that particular parable, um, example, he was talking about people who were laboring. So we now limited it to that. But you see, everything Jesus did, all the parables he gave, he was showing us a kingdom operation. Now, here he was saying that they labored. You, you are reapers of that which had been worked, which had been sown, which had been worked on. You are supposed to be reapers. Now, which talking about the harvest, the greatest wealth that you have is the wealth 
of the nations that you are taking. You see, one of the express limitations of our ability to operate in wealth is that we limited wealth to money, finances. I gave us an example during the 11, 11, 11, 11. For those of us who were there, I gave us an example of what wealth is using the richest man that ever lived. Was it Solomon? But the king of Mali, an African, His wealth, some people were trying to qualify it in recent time, and they saw that they were counting in quadrillions. No, not, no, in zillions. Because we are the one who we carry the wealth that will be quantified by quadrillions. The wealthiest people today are qualified as billionaires. So that tells me that we're yet to see the true wealthy men, people. And why they are called, they are, they are, their wealth is quantified in billions because they are counting in dollar currencies. But there is a currency that we are going to operate in. That currency, one of it will cover the richest man's wealth as at this present time. That is why you will hear that they say the richest man. They don't say the wealthiest man. Those who are, who were quantified as wealthy, they were owners of nations. They took hold nations. They were wealthier. They were richer. Even in livestock, in gold, in silver, in bronze, they were even in male servant, they were richer than whole nations, that nations had to go into MOUs with them for fear that if they should mistakenly partner with their enemy in time of war, that they would overrun them. Those who were wealthy, Abraham, 380 servants that grew up in his house, that's the house of a wealthy man. Only 380 overrun five kings. That's they took over, they, they overrun five nations. That is wealth. Because when you say you are wealthy, you are wealthy in wisdom, you are wealthy in thoughts, you are wealthy in understanding, you are wealthy in counsel. What kind of counsel? Counsel that will shut down the operations of the systems of the earth, of corrupt systems that will enliven and bring into operations the operations of the kingdom of God. That is why we are talking about the kingdom conventus, because the kingdom conventus will shut down the systems of corruption to bring into play this the incorruptible system that begins to establish. Look at every wealthy person today. You will see that they destroy things in order to create wealth for themselves. It is rooted in selfishness. But the wealth of the kingdom is a wealth that anywhere it enters, it transforms that place. That is why you are not a wealthy man if, I just want to give this example, if it's only your house that has electricity in the estates. You are not a wealthy man. No matter, <laughs> no matter the wealth you display, your wealth is nothing if your wealth is not transforming the city where you are in. So when Jesus said, go make disciples of the nation, that is wealth. 
What it means is that you are making disciples. You are reproducing the kingdom of God in every place that you step into. When the kingdom of God is, repro is reproduced in a place, corruption is neutralized. Sicknesses disappear. All the vices that you see in society today, they melt. They just disappear. The fear of the Lord begins to rule. Like in a typical kingdom where a king is, you will find that the fear of the king rules in that kingdom. Now, that is what wealth is. Now, so when we talk about sea gates, the wealth of the sea gates, you see, look at, when we talk about oil, when you talk about um, diamonds, talk about setting precious stones, even talk about the various kind of animal creation, um, all the creation, all the beasts in the sea. Talk about the plants in the sea. You begin to see that there is so much wealth that the sea contains such wealth. Even the land where you occupy was birthed from the womb of the sea. And yet in the land contains even wealth. Talk about gold, silver, tin, or talk about marble, The sea gave birth to the land, and within the land are embedded all of those wells. So when you talk about the wealth of the sea, how do you harness, how do you assess that wealth? What we have seen, for especially Africans, Anything that comes from the sea, you say is, um, what do they call it now? Uh, marine spirits. But have you ever wondered why is it that it's only in Africa that the marine spirit tends to thrive? Why is it that in other nations, well, I don't know, but take, for example, the developed nations. How come they use the marine spirits to bring transformation? Why is it that we have to be afraid of the marine spirits? When he said, your ordination was to govern in the sea, in the air, and on the land. How come? Have you ever thought about it? Somebody introduced the marine spirit or the marine world in order to keep you out of that wealth gate so that they can harness the wealth gate. That is why you will see that the people who taught you marine spirit are the same people who are floating their ship over the marine waters to harness. Look at, they even say, they even gave a wing of their soldiers. They named them marine. <laughs> they named them the marines. And they are an elite squad. But you, they kept away. They said it's marine. You, you, see, they gave their own. They gave their soldiers marine. But you, you are saying spirit. So you are afraid of the spirit or you are worshiping. Is that that they are afraid of the spirit or they are worshiping the spirit? I believe there's nobody here who, who is afraid of that thing. So when you say, the, is the marine world real? Yes, it is real. But what is marine? Marine is just you 
accessing the water gates to operate and to harness the wealth of that marine world. There is a maritime operation that releases wealth. Look at it. Is it not the sea gate when you talk about the seaports? That's a, that's, that's a wealth gate of the sea. Just as the airport is actually designed, first of all, to harness the wealth gate of the air. Then the land borders were actually harnessed by design for people to assess the riches of the land. That is why you see that when they want to overrun the land, the first thing they want to do is to capture the airways, the air gates, then the sea gate. Once those two are taken, then the, the, the land is overrun. Once the, your waterways have been captured and your airways have been captured, the land is in trouble. The land, that land is finished. The land is overpowered. No matter how powerful, no matter how strong the soldiers, the army, the land army is. Once the waterways and the airways have been taken, because wh whoever takes the air and the waterways overruns the land. Hallelujah. So, harnessing the wealth of the labors of either our fathers or people, you must first connect with the expressions of God's kingdom that flows from his throne. Motive is key. That's why you find that, since you've been listening to those teachings, you will see that we dwell so much on the power of thoughts and the sanctified imagination. Why? Because if your motives are not right, you may be limited to the wealth that you will assess. Why? Because once the motives are wrong, when wealth comes into a man's hand, they are corrupted. That is why you see that most of the people, the wealthy people who are today, you will think they are running mad because of the kind of things they are doing with their wealth, the kind of um, experimentations, the kind of things that they are, the kind of things they are bringing up. They are even deciding how many lives will be, how many people should die. So that is not a kingdom wealth expression. Kingdom, that is why there are certain things that they have labeled that they can't yet assess that you, once you come into alignment and you begin to press into what you are doing now and you begin to ascend into glory heights, come into the full expression, the consciousness of where you are seated with him, you begin to see what has been allowed from the throne. That is what you begin to express on the air trap. When that happens, one of the things we are going to teach during the, um, we call it supernatural trades, one of the things we are going to see is that most of the things that we have called wealth, they are really not wealth. Because when you see the wealth of God's kingdom, you are in a hurry to bring that into expression on the earth realm. Listen, the gold of this earth, do you know that the gold of this earth is actually different from the gold of the, of the kingdom? That is why when you bring the gold of the kingdom, those who know the quality of gold, they will see that's why they describe the gold in Eden. Say the gold of that land is good. Does it mean other gold they are not good? But that one is qualified because it's a gold from a realm. The gold in that land is a gold from a realm. It carries purity. That's why when you see gold dust and you enter into the room where there is gold dust, 
you find that healings take place. Because with every every time you inhale, it purifies your system. It detoxifies your system and even purifies your thought realm. The spiritual gold dust has the power, the ability to purify everything. Your heart cleanses your heart of every dirt and it corrects every wrong motive. What wealth is better than that? So to harness the wealth of the sea gates, the number one thing to be dealt with. Say again, more fast up preach again. The number one thing to deal with is motive. Why do you want to assess that wealth? Remember, I said something. Okay, it was this day. Sorry, and okay, I, I, for those of you who have watched that video um, that I sent out, you will see that I was saying that questions are photos. Questions are doorways. They are gateways to your assessing the things that have been hanging in the spirit that you have not been able to assess. So ask questions. Why do I want this kind of wealth? Why do I want to assess this particular gate? Then your motive will begin to open up. If your motives are wrong, they will show you so you correct it. That way, that is where the will comes in. So the will shuts down anything that is wrong. That's why I said the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than the surgeon's scalpel. It divides, it discerns, it opens you up to show you what you should allow and what you should not allow. That's why I said that that, that word is a discerner of every thought and intent of the heart. So it discerns the thoughts to show you this is why you are doing this thing. And it is not, it will not give the father pleasure. So you shut it down. If you show you this is what you should do to bring pleasure to the Father, so you allow that one to flow. Hallelujah. So it's time. Now, one of the things that you need to start doing is this. Walk around the sea and legislate your sonship and establish the kingdom conventus over the sea gates so that the corruption that had been in that gate will be transformed into incorruption. That way you begin to express, you begin to subdue. What does it mean? Remember that you were created to, domi to have dominion. What does it mean to have dominion? To fix, to repair the things that have been destroyed. To take rulership of that gate. Now, so when you understand that I'm supposed to be ruling over the sea gate, how do you express your rulership? By decrees. Legislating your priesthood over that gate. And by calling forth the things that should be operating based on what you have seen. That is where the glassy sea comes in. So you now, in the glassy sea, you will see the original intention of God concerning that particular thing. So you now, by declaration, you now begin to speak it forth and begin to realign and you begin to fix and begin to redirect and recalibrate and reconfigure that thing to function the original way as you are seeing it from the glassy sea. Does that make sense, Blanche? Blanche, are you still there? Yes, sir. Yes, I am. Yes, okay. Sir. Does that help you? Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Now, one aspect I want to add also. You know, I started with, I said, when Jesus said the laborer is worthy of his wage, we began to think that the laborer, we limited it to salary. Your salary, listen, listen. Your salary that you earn in the office is actually, um, how do I put it now? It's like an insight. It's just a physical expression of what your true wage is. Your wage is not from that office. Your wage is from the throne of God.
Your wage is from the throne. Your wage is not from the account, the accountant's office. Your wage is not that check. Your name is not, your name being in the company's payroll is only a physical expression of another payroll that legislates over the physical payroll. That is why you will see where he says, you that have no money, come buy and eat. Why? Because you don't need money to buy. What you need is to come into the consciousness, the conscious state of your sonship expression. You will be downloading wage and you will be paying your directors. Oh my God. The season that we are entering, where sons are coming into expression, they are coming to the conscious expression of who they are. It's a season where you will see that the people who are paying you, <laughs> they will be wondering where you are making your money. Because any time that company runs into trouble, you will be at the gate to bail them out. Because you are connected to another source. Remember the oak tree? The oak tree does not depend on rain. The oak tree does not depend on irrigation. Those are salaries. The oak tree depends on the fountain of living waters. And you are oaks of righteousness, which means you draw from the very source of life. You draw from the very source of wealth. Ooh, hallelujah. So while wow. others are seeking wealth, you are connected to the very source of wealth. So you become wealth yourself. And that is why anywhere you enter, the fragrance of wealth follows you to express itself, to express the wealth of the kingdom in every place that you find yourself. I remember when I was in a particular place, there are times I didn't have any time in my pockets. There were times I didn't have money. But you see, when people need money, they will be sending me their account details. So one day I had to meet the point man. I said, please, is it that you told these people that you normally give me a certain amount to keep. His reply was, Glenn, it is who you are, your courage. I didn't understand it then until in recent time as I began to meditate on what wealth is. The Lord says, son, I'm not giving you wealth. I'm making you wealth. I have made you to be the wealth of nations. That is why any nation you enter, that nation is favored because you carry my kingdom wealth into the place. So you see, so stop asking to be made wealthy. Instead, ask that you be manifested, that the wealth that you are begin to find expression. Come on. Do, do, you see, do you see the difference? So instead of trying to break into wealth, express wealth because you are wealth. Nations should be joyful. Establishments, organizations should be happy because you came into the scene. Why? Because when they see you, they see wealth. Somebody just said, kingdom wealth is true dominion. It transforms and distributes, but worldly wealth is actually just money with a view to dominate and oppress others. Very true. So you see, when, when a wealthy man enters a place, because that wealth is established in righteousness, the nations, everybody around the person will rejoice. And they are not just rejoicing because they are going to get uh, 10,000 naira to buy uh, to buy rice. No. They are rejoicing because they know 
that because this man is here, everything that was dead around them begins to come to life. Whether marriages, relationships, um, health, whatsoever was dead begins to come. Why? Because a wealthy man entered into the scene. And yet the man may not, the man may not display anything money. The man may not give out any, they may not see any money. But you see, wealth came in. I just I, I pray that your consciousness of your wealth being be awakened now in the name of Jesus. I just release it now. Let, let, let that atmosphere be created where you begin to walk in the consciousness of your wealth being because you are a wealth being. You are wealth. I want you to type it. I want you to say it. I want you to scream it, to shout it and say, I am wealth. I'm I am wealth. 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 Amen. All right. I think I think we've explained we've dealt with that, right? Thank you. Yeah, God bless you. Okay. Let's have Esther. Go ahead. I'm going to read the question first, then okay. the question on here by Sister Busola. It says, please, sir, can you expand on the operations of the kingdom of witnesses where there are no believers to work with? Okay. All right. That's a cloud of witnesses. Now, you should know that they are ever around you. They are always around you. Why? Because it is the ordination. Seeing, therefore, that we have such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside mm. every weight and that sin that does so easily beset you. Beset could also mean they upset you, they irritate you, they anger you. That word means lay aside that sin, means lay aside all the annoyances. Mm. Lay aside the distractions. That's what the weight and that sin. So lay aside those annoyances, those distractions, lay them aside. Then look up unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. Now, seeing therefore that we are surrounded, which means they are there constantly. That is why you, nobody should ever feel lonely. Listen, when you begin to walk, when your focus is on Christ, you will be amazed that the cloud of witnesses that have been released to partner with you at given times. Yes, depending on where you are, depending on what you are doing, depending on what has been assigned to do to you at specific times, there are witnesses that had walked that realm, that had walked that path, that that path had been opened to, that we come to join force with you because you are the perfection of what they began. This is also in line with that question that how do I enter into their labors? One of the ways to enter into that labor is by partnering with the ones who labored it. Because guess what? When you become you that is the reaper and the one that sold, Right, both the sower and the reaper, they come together. So the glory of the latter house becomes greater than the former because it's a combination of the former and the latter rain. I'm speaking from the throne now. Well, always speaking from, but this something just opened up in the spirit. That's what I mean. So you see, every time, at every given time, there are clouds of witnesses that are waiting to partner with you based on what has been opened to you. Some were the ones who who they, whom they used to initiate that work, that pathway. Some were the ones that opened up that pathway. Take, for example, Enoch. 
Once you start pursuing something that has to do with immortality, it not come to partner. Why? Because he was the first person after the fall that located that pathway and walked it. He connected to the operations of eternity and entered into the fullness of what Christ had finished and connected with the resurrected life and brought that into the present and began to walk it. Years before Jesus came to bring that which was completed in eternity, years before he brought it into time. So every time you connect with that, you will be amazed that he will come to partner with you because there are things that he also needs to, that needs to be perfected. There are things that he will begin to teach you. So now, if there, is, if there are no believers around you, you can still establish the conventus by connecting with the cloud of witnesses because they are fellow saints, fellow believers, caught up in the realms of the spirit, but always with us. They will come and they will partner with you and sometimes you will see them. And guess what? If every one of us on this platform today begin to learn to connect and to establish kingdom conventions in every place that we are, don't be surprised that sometimes you will find that whilst you are trying to connect, because I'm already connected in the spirit, you'll find that I'll just connect with you in our thoughts. In our thoughts. And we'll start fellowshipping in our thoughts. And we enter into the name of Yeshua in our thoughts. And we establish kingdom conventions. Then anything you decree in that place, where you are, you'll find that it's happening. Why? Because there is an agreement in the spirit. And the Lord is just making me see now. I'm just seeing, I'm, I just saw a scroll. He's just making me see that what has been done in this place, that you can actually walk away. By the time, by time this meeting ends, you can walk away with the consciousness of this meeting. And you will find that anywhere you are, you'll be establishing what has been taught in this place. Establishing the kingdom conventus in every place that you go to. I just saw that scroll now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We receive. We enter it. Okay. Amen. God bless you. Musola, I hope that helps. I hope that answers the question. All right. Esther, let's hear you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Um, so since there's no tables to break <laughs> or chairs, my question is going to break any furniture there is. Um, so you talked about choices on the uh, previous that recording on how choice is a remedy operation. And that got me that got me brooding over or wondering over a lot of things so i'm trying to bring it out of my uh um uh, bring it out of my head and put it in words so maybe all over the place so in if that's the case what has what in my life for an ex for example the choices that have made that i felt in the old me that I felt that I made got me to where I am based on me feeling like it was a wrong choice. And in one way or the other, that made me taking me to down the wrong path and only to come back and re commit myself to God and all that. And now on the right part, does that mean it was allowed and going back to my, if, if in, in the sense that in my scroll, does that mean it was already ordained? And if it was already, if it was ordained, if it wasn't ordained, was it, does that mean that it was altered? If it's, if, if my scroll is already set or was it means all in the, in the allowance of God or all in the allowance that there is concerning my scroll or is it ever ever creating 
I hope my question is making sense. Don't worry, I I I I I, I can already connected with okay. your question. Right? Gotcha. Okay. Yes. So now, yes. Let I Go think on. we are missing something there. The focus is the real. Yes. The real. Said it is God that gives us the will and the power both to will and to do of the will to be willing to do both to do I mean the the power to will and to do of his good pleasure so he is the one who gives us the will or he is the one yeah he gives us the will and he gives us the mm -hmm. power both to do, both to will, and to do of his good pleasure. Now, when you understand that, take time to look at the will. Two things are stands out there. His will, the will, and his good pleasure. Those are the two things. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive all glory, for thou hast created all things, and for your pleasure they were all created. For your pleasure they were all created. So, by design, by ordination, your life's goal, your life's ordination, your life's assignment is to do what? To bring right. pleasure in all mm -hmm. that you do unto him. Now, what the will does is this. The will was given to you hmm. to be able to filter anything that will not give God pleasure. You shut it down in the realm of the will. So it never, remember I said that you are the gate and you are the gatekeeper. Yes, sir. The will is our gate. It is like um, the joystick. The joystick operator. You know what the joystick is? Yes, sir. The, jo uh -huh. the joystick is the person that is on the control of the Cons CCTV camera, the console. Now, the person must be sensitive as to know, to sense, should I allow this person in or I don't allow this person in? Hmm. Because that is the highest point of security. Hmm. That is why the watchmen in Israel, the people they call the watchmen in Israel, you know what they do? They are on the console and they are monitoring. The moment they see somebody by the border, they have three seconds to decide whether they should blast the person, that particular movement. They should blast the movement or they should allow the movement. Hmm. Whatever decision they make will determine what goes wrong or what goes right. Hmm. Now, that is the operation of the wheel. The will is a major filter, just like your gut. If your gut becomes weak based on the things that we are taking and it destroys the gut, what happens? Free radicals begin to enter into your body and that's when you start looking for a way to detoxify. That detoxification is a remedy. Mm. Mm. That detoxification is choice. Mm. Stopped. However, if the gut, if you took care of your gut, mm. the gut would have filtered, would not allow free radicals to go into your system, so you wouldn't need anything in the mm. Yes, sir. Because the gut filters things that come into your system. So it only allows the things that will give your body pleasure to come into your system mm. because the gut is highly functional. So in the same way, the will 
which God gives you the power both to will and to do. What the will does is to discern what is the pleasure, what gives God pleasure, and he allows that. But where the will becomes weak, what was not designed to be allowed, remember? What he says is that whatsoever you allow is must be what has been allowed. Now, if you now allow what has not been allowed on the throne, you allow that into infiltrate the earth or infiltrate your life or infiltrate your home, what happens? That is when the issue of choice comes. So choice is re a remedia to correct that thing that was not meant to be allowed through the will, but the will, because of the weakness, allowed it to find expression. So choice now come. How do we remedy this? What should we do? Should we do it this way? Should we be doing that? That is why people get caught up and that is why they make, that's why Sometimes they end up in confusion because mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what should I do now? What should I do? But if it was not allowed from the will, the issue of choice wouldn't have been wouldn't have arisen. Does it make sense? Mm. Yes, sir. So you now see that actually, if you're if you so strengthen your will, how do you strengthen your will in the place of constant fellowshipping with the Lord? Mm. And as you fellowship with him, you see his face, so you know what you must do. So you, you are building according to pattern. You are allowing on the earth realm what he has allowed. When that happens, the issue of choice will never arise because there is only one thing that is playing out, the will of God that is giving him pleasure. Chicken. Yes, sir. Does that make it clear now? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. God bless you. All so right. Second... Oh, second one. Go ahead, go ahead. So um, today's topic on convertives, I understand perfectly, but the question came, so I'm asking. Um, right. In terms of intercessory groups, or should, in, should an intercessor be more of a convertus than just interceding? Your intercessions should be the intercessions you are interceding must be the place. As a matter of fact, your intercession, right, yes, is sir. an operation of the conventus. Okay. Remember, yes, it says, okay. if two of you shall agree as touching a thing. So your intercession is flowing from the place of agreeing as touching a thing based on what had been released. In the heavens. So you are now interceding for that thing to find expression on the earth. How do you intercede from the place of, of when you are standing, when you have discovered, when you have established a kingdom jurisdiction in a place? What do you start doing? Your intercession now is that that jurisdiction begins to expand. Yes, sir. So it begins to find expression. You started three of you. So it begins to find expression. People begin to come into that jurisdiction and they are reconfigured and their mindset is tuned to become the mindset of that kingdom expression that have been established in that place. Does it make sense? Perfectly. Thank you. So sir. you see that your intercession, your intercessions, your, your intercessory language changes. It becomes more of decrees and declarations establishing things. The kingdom of God must be Visible in this place. The kingdom of God was visible in this place. So you begin to multiply the conventus. Hmm. And the ecclesia begins to expand. So you now begin to legislate over the city. Yes. So the, the conventus is a jurisdiction where the ecclesia of Jesus Christ, that's talking about kingdom conventus now, is, mm -hmm. is, a, is, 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 a, is an oppression or, sorry, it's a jurisdiction created by a part of the ecclesia that now forms another ecclesia to establish the kingdom of God. That is why when you send out, at, say, for example, this is what I expect us to do, talking about, okay, what should be the way forward in our sonship expression after this school of supernatural. This is what I expect us to start doing, that we start from our homes, right? With our children and establish consciously the conventus so that everybody begin to express the supernatural. So 
there is no food in the house. You are not, and no money to buy food. You are not thinking about, oh, I wish one auntie would just walk in now or one uncle would just come in now. Instead, you command and food comes. That the mother would just enter the kitchen, carry pot and place on the fire. And all of a sudden, hmm. you see that something just appears and the children just see food on the table. Mommy, how did you do that? Oh, I'm a son. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I'm a son. And as a son, I have the power to command because the power that is in Jesus, mm -hmm. how he called those things that be not as though they are, how he told Peter when he needed to pay tax, he said, go, the fish, the first fish that appears, open the mouth and collect the coin and pay for yourself and pay for me too. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. come on. There are no finances in the house, no problem. So mm -hmm. no finances in the house, no problem. All of a sudden, you tell your, one of your sons, or one of your daughters, okay, go to my wallet, go to my go to my bag upstairs. I, I have just check my wallet and bring the money that you see inside. But they knew they have checked that wallet yesterday. As a matter of fact, one of them spent the last dime in that wallet. But you are saying, go to that same wallet and, and they will say, Well, see, just go and bring the money there. And they go and they see money just enough for what is needed. Now, when you begin to practice that, do you know what you have done? By the time your children are going to school, you said, that which you have seen me do, that you also begin to practice in your school. Hey, come on. That mm. you too begin to practice in your school. Yes. I know of a child, a, a young man, who began to practice working with angels. Then he took it to his school, and one day, he told his friend how one day he forgot his notebook at home and he told his angel to help him bring the book. And he went on break and he came back and he saw the notebook on his table. <laughs> so he told his friend and they began to, two of them began to practice it. Do you know what, I, what, what that means? The conventus is being established in that place. As they begin to practice, it starts expanding. More children will start joining them. The kingdom of God is being established. Mm. Remember that the purpose, the sole purpose of the conventus is to establish, to establish kingdom, the kingdom of God in every place where you are, at your place of work. Mm. They say, huh, the, the MD just announced, man, except something, except a miracle happens, we may not be able to pay salaries. And you are privileged to be in the management and you heard that announcement. What should you do? Would you start fretting or would you go and start looking for another job? No. What you do, that is when the conventus, kingdom operation set, sets in. You call one or two persons whom you know they belong to the body and you form a conventus and you decree kingdom decrees in that place. Mm -hmm. And you say by this time tomorrow, everything that is needed to pay all the workers comes. Do you know why? Remember, you, you now say, you now make a decree. No, every worker is worthy of his wage. There is no worker in this place that mm. will live without earning their salary. Because you are establishing, that is, you are expressing the oak tree expression. You are manifesting the oak tree expression. Guess what? That, you'll find that within 24 hours, things begin to work. As soon as you finish making that decree, things begin... The forces of nature is commanded to make things happen in order to make that mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. that fund ready in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. That is what we should start doing now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, sir. There's another question. Okay. From this from Sister Busala this time. Okay. She said, sir, in the congregation of believers. Combining both sons and ordinary believers, can conventus be effective slash activated by the sons with this mix? The sons are the ones who will establish it. Then other ones, when they see the operations of the, of the conventus that the sons have formed, the kingdom conventus the, the sons have formed, it will provoke them to provoke them to jealousy and stir up the sonship that is in them that they did not know is in them. So it is the sons because light and darkness can work together, even though they are nominal, but you see, they are still 
they, they, they are one leg in, one leg out. They are yet to come into a full expression of it. So what the sons do will do in that case is that the sons within the place, they come from a conventus. That is why, you know, remember what we keep teaching that Eudokia, that's why we don't have a local church. All right? That's why we don't have a local church. As a matter of fact, subsequent meetings on these first Sundays is not going to be in the mornings like this. So that people who people would have gone to churches for places where they go to churches in the morning, like in Nigeria, in Africa, people would have been able to go to church in order to come back and to join. So we'll make it either in the either in the afternoon or in the evening, so that more people can join from different parts of the world. Right now, however, we're having this today because it's just the inaugural, and this time specifically was given to me. That was why I couldn't compromise it. Because normally when times are given, they are portals, they are gateways. So you don't want to bring in your own time because then it will become, you will be, it will become a remedia. Choices will come in. <laughs> because the Lord is, is, is taking me through the school of the wheel. So much I'm learning about the wheel. So much I'm learning about the wheel. So, like I'm saying, so the sons in the place, so what we normally say in Yudokia is that you are being trained so that you will go into the local churches, discover sons, and form a conventus, form a jurisdiction, a kingdom jurisdiction in the place through which you will start expanding what you have learned in this place. And through that, you will awaken more sons who have been in the state of slumber. Because those sons are in the state of slumber because they are yet to be awakened into the consciousness of their sonship. And that's why the enemy writes on their ignorance. But now, you carry this knowledge into those places. Stir them up by you establishing the convent to the jurisdiction that will awaken their consciousness. Then one by one, they will start coming in. They will start joining. And the convent begins to expand. A time will come, once you have discipled them long enough, don't be surprised that Lord is okay. Let's go to the next place. Let's go to the next town. For they also need to know and come into this knowledge and understanding. Pusola, I hope that helps. All right, Vivian, let's hear you. Okay, thank you, sir. Bless you. Yeah, um, actually, I wanted to share a testimony, especially when you were talking about um, making degrees and taking the sea gates and all that. So what happened was uh, three days ago, I was in my house and all of a sudden, my husband just came in and said uh, that the rain has started. I was not like, eh, first rain of the year. So I just rushed out. So immediately I rushed out. Even my daughter followed me, but Joshua followed me, and we're under the rain. We're making declarations. We're just speaking, 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 making declarations. And then when we're satisfied, we came inside, and I continued with my trading. And just like that, one hour later, I made the kind of profit that that shocked me. And it has been like that, like a daily thing. Although what I've been making daily is not as much as what I made as, um, one hour after that declaration, but it has been wonderful. I just thought to share, sir. Okay. Now, see, what she just shared, one of the things we are going to learn when we take that um, school, I don't know what to call it yet, whether supernatural works, I don't know yet. They will, when they give me the thing, we will know. But... One of the things we are going to learn is this, that in trading as sons, you don't trade as others do. They will give you the time to start. Now, if you are looking at your trading app, you will see that the trading is rising. Now, you will be tempted, let me jump in. They will say, don't. Then just when it looks like it's coming down, they will say, now, nah, get in. And you get in. As soon as you get in, you will see that it may drop, drop. Then all of a sudden, it begins to rise. And it goes up to a peak and sustains for a moment. They will Just while it's still dragging in that sustenance at that peak, they will not say, now nah, pull out. 
if you don't pay attention to the pulling out, you will see that you will start losing. I did that experiment with a young man. I said, I want, you see, what I try to do is when the Lord gives me things, I look for somebody who I don't do, I don't do those trades. All right. The one that I even got involved with, they've not allowed me to even trade with it. Instead, I'm just a user, right? They, I just use the product. They've not allowed me, right? Now, so, but I just, a young man called me who was discussing some things with me. So I said, okay, you know what? Let's practice something. As, just like you said, we'll just make declarations. Then we will wait in the ascensions. All of a sudden, we will see when they just, we will hear an announcement, the trades are open. I will say now, jump in. So he jumped in and he made some, he made some crazy, that's a, sorry, permit me to use the word, he made some crazy profits. But within 10 minutes, the thing was still moving. And we heard the trade is over pull out. I said, pull out now. So he pulled out. As soon as he pulled out, about three minutes later, we saw that the thing just crashed. And the young man said to me, the first time, I said, ah, Pastor Plain, ah, thank God you were here with me. This is what I would have lost. Is it because, ah, the way the thing was going, I wanted to just continue. Thank God you were here with me. Now, listen. This is what it means to trade from the ascensions. Where they will give you one kingdom coin that will reconfigure the time setting. And you will trade for five minutes. But what you will make in that five minutes, people who have been trading and people who will trade for the next two weeks, they won't make it. Even if they were making profits every time, every day. So I just gave you a trailer of what we are going to learn. So I'll leave it there. God bless you. So I think we've had enough for today. I think we've had enough for today. So we shall continue on Wednesday when the topic is the topic. But Wednesday will be a live fellowship. Will be a live fellowship and on-site fellowship. That would be our first fellowship for the year. And we'll be starting with, let's just come, mingle, dine and wine together. And let's just relish on all that we've learned. Amen. So as many as can find their way to Lekki on Wednesday, please do. But if you can, don't worry, we'll still, we'll still have a teaching. We'll still have a teaching, very short teaching to encourage us. Then... After that, we'll just have the breaking of bread. So just get your communion, your communion elements ready, because we'll have communion on that day. Then we'll have breaking of bread. Amen. All right. Somebody is already requesting for French toast. My my special French toast, no wahala. We'll do some free food on that day. So that day, the fellowship yeah. might start from 12 noon, not the usual 11, so that we'll have time. For people like us, who, now that they are requesting French toast, we have to take our time to make the French toast ready. All right. Okay. So, God bless you. I appreciate you guys. I love you. And even as we continue through this season, as we continue to journey into light, I pray that the paths that are already made straight will grant, will there will be a frequency that will energize your leg for speed in the name of Jesus. I pray and by, I decree and declare that pathways, the new pathways will be open to you. You will walk in the love frequency and light frequency and sound frequency all combined to catapult you from where you have been into the place that has been ordained for you to operate in in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord relish over you and breathe life and grace 
into your heart in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 